Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio community. My name is John and for this video we're going to give you some RipeWave Audio news for early 2022 and we're going to focus in on the state of AV processors and receivers and um, it's quiet out there. It's too quiet. You know we don't hear a lot of announcements around AV processors and receivers as of late and those that we do it's a little hard for us to fully trust that the they're going to meet the dates that they're promising. You know, there's a lot of challenges out there in the world with the pandemic and shipping problems and production problems and chip availability. And uh, this has really impacted the audio world, um, particularly for uh, AV processes and receivers. But first, a little bit of great news. Uh, this RipeWave Audio community continues to grow. We are now at 3,000 subscribers. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, together, I think we're going to be able to um, you know, put together some, some good content for you as we go forward. And I, I hope to have your uh, support as, as we move forward. But but thank you for, for this achievement, and let's see how far we can get in the coming year. Well, let's get into this news story, and this really all broke in October of 2020 when uh, Asashi Kasai, AKM, which we know better, they make a lot of DACs for receivers, processors, etc., and um, they had this huge fire. And it lasted 82 hours. It took, you know, close to three days to put out and really devastated their factory, uh, not just for DAX and everything, but a lot of other components that they make. Uh, I think even affected the automotive industry, uh, the uses of their products. Uh, they keep, they've had very limited knowledge or announcements that are coming out about their progress and, and restoring their normalcy around production. Uh, in April of last year, they had this general announcement that says, we're still investigating, which didn't give us a lot of hope about when this was going to get resolved. And in June of last year, they talked about a, alternative productions, meaning they're going to have other uh, suppliers make their products for them, uh, some of the products at that time. In December, uh, just a few months ago, they talked about DAX and analog to digital converters uh, that ship uh, samples would be shipping soon. So that's just samples and not full production. Uh, the announcement in January was the best one we heard of to date, which was they, they have actually talking about mass production finally, but that's not out until Q3 of this year, which would bring it close to two years uh, since the fire. And so that it's really, you know, delayed everything. And then the latest announcements in, in February says that they're re ready to provide 13 new Velvet Sound DAX and ADC samples. Uh, I don't know what the, quite they mean by new of these old models that are new production or actually new models. That wasn't really clear to me. Um, but with two years underway that the chance that they could have new models coming you know that the normal uh, uh, development cycle you know they can still do development without a production facility so these could be new models that would be exciting uh, a part of this so uh, we we are not out of the woods yet and I think that is really what has caused all these issues with the the AV companies coming out with new processes and receivers and if you had tuned in, we had the recap of 8K um, processor receivers at, in December last year. And this is the slide from that. And we, at that time, we were waiting and still, we were hopeful that we would actually see some of these things in the last couple of months start to break um, out a little bit. Um, but not a lot of change here. Um, it, it's, it's disappointing uh, that this slide, I really didn't have to update. I didn't update. This is the slide that we showed in December. But let's go into it more detail than we did then and um, maybe gleam some more light into this. 
um, and and get more status. So, Acuras, you know, we we've heard this story, which is it's a great story that the existing hardware in the Muse in the Act Four is software upgradable to support 2.1. So it's HDMI 2.1 ready, uh, and I've gone back and checked all these websites, and these this, these are some snippets right from the manufacturer websites. I was not using third-party information here, uh, so this is right as they're communicating it out to the world still today, as of right today. This was this was captured today, and so no change there from Acuras, uh, but you know we're waiting to see those software updates uh, come. Anthem, this is gonna this has been an interesting story because when they came out with their announcements of their new receivers and the new processors in October of uh, 2020, this was big news. Uh, people were very excited about the this offering. Uh, and they have come out and there has been very positive stories, but there's a couple of things that haven't materialized um, that was from that original announcement. The, the most obvious one is the delays that they've had with the AVM90 processor. You know, we see this, they, they, they delayed it. It was going to be a, little, a few months later than the AVM70, you know, for spring of 2021. And then it was out to the fall. And now we're checking the website and it said, you know, winter. And um, I guess we're still winter um, of 2022. But uh, uh, not not quite there yet. Now I have heard reports that some reviewers are maybe getting an initial sample or early production model of the AVM90. That's positive news. So we hope to see that 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 soon. But even the 70, the availability has been spotty, right? So I just took a sampling of three different uh, web online retailers, and a couple of them are showing unavailable. And let's see, one of them says shipping date unknown. Uh, the other one says delivery in March, late March. That's not too bad. And then one of them says they have it in stock. So um, these have been hard to find, like hard to find, maybe not as bad as the PS5 uh, PlayStation, but um, yeah, availability has been tough. The HDMI board. You know, the, with the announcement, they had the HDMI 2.1 board that said, hey, we're going to give you 2.0 because it's stable. When we are ready to do 2.1, we'll give you a 2.1 board. That's a good promise, uh, but we haven't got any updates, uh, announcements of when that might become available. So we're still waiting on that. Now, let's take a look at Harman. So they have their four brands. They've only talked about HDMI 2.1 8K support for two of those brands, RCAM and JBL Synthesis. I haven't seen any notices on Audio Control or Lexicon. I've checked all their websites. Nothing available or promoted as of yet for that. But they did have some announcements. Uh, in April last year, RCAM came out with their announcement that they're going to have a board. They were targeting for Q4 of last year. That came and went. Uh, the snapshot here is from the website. Uh, they show that announcement there. Uh, looking at the product pages, they're still saying that each of these models have 2.0B in them. Uh, likewise, uh, JBL Synthesis, I think they did something in April as well, but the, 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 the currently posted is a September announcement, and this is right from their website today. They talk about the support for 2.1 AK video that's coming uh, to existing models they, it was, that was targeted for December of last year, uh, right? And uh, so that was going to be even priced in November. Uh, maybe that just went out to the dealers. I couldn't find any information on that pricing. And uh, they said two new models were coming that would incorporate that uh, that board Q1 of 2022. Yet no additional information on that. Those new models are going to be called the SDP58 and the SDR38. So we're, we're waiting to see. Um, but nothing from Lexicon or, or audio control that we could find. 
Uh, we can only assume that because of the close relationship with the common ownership, and we know those other products are all derived from the, t the same chat type of chassis and, and boards and get reused. So that's likely to happen. Emotiva. So they haven't made any formal announcements that I know of. Uh, but if you go on their lounge site, and I, I, I look at that from time to time, they did a make a, a one of their own employees who weighs in on that Emotiva lounge is what I'm trying to think of. So Keith wrote in that they did have, they do have a prototype, and this is in August of last year, a prototype HDMI 2.1 board uh, that's that's going to be released in the near future, right? So eARC is coming, he's mentioning those things, right? And so it'll be available for the XMC2, the RMC1, and the RMC1L models, right? So, um, yeah. Um, and then they said they may, he's not certain if that will actually be available for the XMC1, the prior generation there. Um, yeah, so they, they made that announcement. Plus, a month later, they came up with these videos. Now, they have already launched some I.O. modules that go into the RMC1. It's a long time coming for that, those expansion modules, to give you extra, um, extra ports there. Uh, but at the same time, they had this dedicated video on how to install the HDMI module. And that gave us, well, they're gearing up for release of an HDMI 2.1 board, but yet no announcement, no posting there yet on when that become available. Let's take a look at mono price. Now, they never claimed to yet to have a, another model coming or HDMI 2.1. I bring this up because this has been out of stock for a long time. And if you look closely at their website, because you can order direct from them, it says ETA December 31st, 2022. So they don't expect to have any product this entire year. I think that's amazing um, what's going on uh, out there. Storm Audio. Uh, looking at their their website and uh, you know the announcements that they've made, they made an announcement in May of 2021. Um, you know they talked about being engaged in HDMI 2.0. They talked about their partnership with Cypress Technologies, and that they're developing a card fully compatible with HDMI 2.1, HDCP 2.3 protocol. Uh, and it would be offered to the Mark II, one and two owners in late 2021. Well, there it is, past that deadline, and we still don't see that. They also have uh, on their website, although I don't see an official announcement, uh, press release or anything like that going, but on their website, they do now show a new model. So this is a bit of a news, right? So they have their now their ISP Elite Mark III. So apparently some people are talking about this is coming natively with the 2.1 board. However, the content that's on the website now, if you go on to product specifications, is still showing this as a 2.0B HDCP 2.2 compliant product, not HDMI 2.1. We'll see. We'll see when more details roll in. Sometimes these early postings do make marketing errors and, and so forth, or uh, it will get rolled in later. But um, again, just another indication of delays. Let's look at Trinoff. And Trinoff is interesting because they have also a partnership with Cypress Technologies for HDMI. And they did come out with something in May of 2020, and this is still on their website. And they talk about um, this from a little different perspective than the others. They're, they're, they're basically coming out and saying 2.1 is not ready. You know, once 2.1 becomes a reality and suitable chipsets are available, a new HDMI 2.1 board will be developed, will be developed. Right? and made available to these products, uh, existing owners is what they're alluding to here. Um, and then they go on to say, 
consider purchasing the new 2.0 board, which they, that Cypress made as well, uh, which will uh, was a, later in that year, which was 2020. So they since have that board, and so they've got the updated 2.0 board, but we're still waiting for Trinoff to say when they think it's ready and they're going to be developing a 2.1 board. So all that is very interesting um, on announcements that we've seen around 2.0, 2.1, I should say. You know, we, we've we seen the products. There are several companies that do have 2.1. And we, you can go back to the other videos we did at the recap of 2021. There's no change in those items that we, we can see. So companies like Denon, Marantz, Onkyo, Pioneer, Integra, um, Macintosh, Lingdorf, they all have 2.1 boards out there. But there's still gaps in some of these product ranges. And what I mean by gaps is if you go back to either existing models that are out there or things that they've had in the past where they don't quite hit today. Um, and I'm particularly focused on like their flagships. Where are their flagships that fully have executed 2.1 or have been refreshed recently? Um, we're not seeing that. Where are the AV processor separates in some of these ranges that were there previously and not there now or haven't been refreshed? So, you know, let's take a look first at Marantz. Yes, there was the AV8805A that Marantz came out with in 2021, which is good to see. It updated. It gave you 8K support. But this was largely based on the 2018 model. So you, yes, you got the 8K refresh, but you really didn't get a full new product. So this is not, I mean, to call it an A, I think was a good move. It's not really the 8806. So where's the 8806, the next one up? Macintosh, you know, we covered their MX123 which is 8K. Um, now they have the MX100 as well, uh, but I'm focusing, look at their flagship. It's more, to me, more interesting that a flagship is missing from update to 8K. The flagship, the MX170, which is the Lingdorf-derived model, and we know Lingdorf has 8K, so um, why haven't they updated their 2019 model as Lingdorf has on their comparable model to support 8K. So where's the updated MX170? On Onkyo, uh, looking at two years, one receiver, one processor, looking at the processor first, their PRRX5100 has been discontinued. You can't get it now. That's, that was, so they have no processor separate in their range today. Um, that model that was discontinued was a 2017 model, so it didn't have 8K support. So where is, can we have a processor separate from Onkyo? I mean, Onkyo has, the videos I do on Onkyo always get a lot of views. There's a lot of interest in them. People seem to like what they're doing recently. So particularly with the Dirac going into it. So I, I didn't put on the slide here, but. That's another thing that this model could use is direct support like the other ones have. There also is the Onkyo TXRZ3100, which has a little more power than the models that they released with 8K. So in the upper end of their receiver range, can we have that 140 watt per channel version uh, with 8K? Uh, the previous model was a 2016 model. So needs a refresh there. Integra, they have the DHC60.7. This is from 2016. So it doesn't have 8K. Um, so where is, and this is their processor separate. So there's, again, no processor separate from Integra as well. Where is, the, where is an updated processor separate? And, and a similar theme, Onkyo, they got their processor, the CX A5200, very much liked processor, processor separate, and they did refresh most of their line 
to have 8K support, but didn't give us a processor separate. So all these companies on the high end, the, the, the flagship models, the processor separates are AVRs. In one case with Onkyo, they're not getting the full power versions. One of these coming, what's holding this up? Now I believe, now this is where the prediction side comes in, that the um, manufacturers are really waiting for the chip um, and the production problems to resolve themselves, you know, to yet release another model and, and further draw upon the chip shortages is only going to exasperate their problems, right? So they'll end up with more products that are showing out of stock and not available and making these, um, making the whole channel kind of upset because I can't get product, I can't click on the button, order it without saying it's going to be a pre-order or it will be shipping in X months or unknown months from now. Uh, so I think they're holding off until there's more confidence that their supply problems have improved. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. You know, I think, uh, you know, it, companies like Emotiva announced a lot of new products last year, and including a, an, an AV um, processor for entry level. But um, the last couple months, we haven't heard a podcast from them. So I think even they are um, now experiencing some of these chip shortage challenges. It's just a guess on my part. So what do you think? Uh, what's, your, what's your opinion on the state of the AV processor market and new models coming out? What are you expecting? Uh, what do you think the problems, what do you think are causing this? That feedback would be useful to the RightWave audio community. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And be sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.